As we learn about organic compounds, we'll be introducing new forms of organic compounds or new functional groups of organic compounds. With each new functional group, we'll want to say something about the physical properties of each of those types of functional groups. Specifically, the physical properties we'll be interested in will be the boiling point and the melting point of each new class of compounds, and then we'll also be interested in the solubility characteristics of each new class of compounds. When we talk about physical properties, it's important to remember that these physical properties are based on the intermolecular forces present in each molecule. You should recall intermolecular forces from your general chemistry classes or other videos that you've watched. For now, it's important to remember a few of these types of intermolecular forces. These include London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonding. When we introduce a new organic functional group, we'll look at the structural components of that functional group to see how they could influence the intermolecular forces that that type of functional group displays. Once we understand the type of intermolecular forces that are present in that functional group, that will lead us to make predictions about the relative boiling points and melting points of that class of organic compounds and it'll also help us to understand or make predictions about the solubility of that class of organic compounds. Before we get too much further, it would be helpful to make a distinction between boiling point and melting point and solubility. With boiling point and melting point, it's important to remember that we're talking about intermolecular forces between molecules of the same compound. So for example, when we're talking about the boiling point of methanol, we're interested in the intermolecular forces that exist between two molecules of methanol. Solubility, on the other hand, involves intermolecular forces between a solute and a solvent molecule. So, for example, if we're interested in understanding the solubility of methanol in water, we'd have to look at the intermolecular forces that exist between methanol and water molecules. So how does the structure of an organic compound influence the physical properties? As we just saw, the structure of the compound can dictate the type of intermolecular forces that are likely to take place in that molecule, and the intermolecular forces will influence the physical properties. Let's take a look at some of the types of compounds that we've already introduced and see what the structural basis of these compounds is for their physical properties. Hydrocarbons, as we've already learned, are composed of only carbons and hydrogens. The carbon-carbon bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds are essentially nonpolar bonds. That means that hydrocarbons have predominantly London dispersion forces as their only intermolecular forces. Alkyl halides are very similar to hydrocarbons in that they have a lot of carbon and hydrogen. However, they also involve a halogen atom. Depending on the halogen atom, there may be some polarity in the molecule based on the electronegativity of the halogen atom involved. This polarity, if it's a very electronegative atom, could result in some dipole-dipole intermolecular forces. Let's take a look at some other types of organic compounds now. We'll begin by looking at the class of organic compounds known as alcohols. As we saw previously, alcohols have carbons and hydrogens along with a hydroxyl group bonded to one of those carbons. Because of this hydroxyl group, alcohols can have hydrogen bonding. They could have hydrogen bonding between one alcohol and another, or they could have hydrogen bonding between the alcohol and a solvent molecule such as water. Ethers also involve oxygen in their structure, but because the oxygen is not directly bonded to a hydrogen, ether molecules cannot hydrogen bond to other ether molecules. However, they could form hydrogen bonds to solvents such as water. The last functional group we learned about were the amines, so let's see how their structures 
influence the intermolecular forces and physical properties they may have. If you recall, amines have a nitrogen bonded to a carbon. The, there is some polarity in the amines arising from the nitrogen bonded to the hydrogen, assuming that we have a primary or secondary amine. Because of that nitrogen-hydrogen bond, amines, or at least primary and secondary amines, could form hydrogen bonding. The presence of the nitrogen also allows amines to receive a hydrogen bond from other molecules. This can even take place with tertiary amines. Let's look at boiling points and melting points in a little more detail, specifically how each of the different types of organic compounds has their structures impact the boiling points and melting points of those compounds. For hydrocarbons, we already know that these are nonpolar compounds. And from general chemistry, we know that nonpolar compounds only have weak dispersion forces. Since dispersion forces are very weak, hydrocarbons will generally have low melting points and boiling points. However, as the hydrocarbons get larger, as more atoms are involved, the dispersion forces will get stronger so that a hydrocarbon with eight carbons will have a much higher boiling point and melting point than a hydrocarbon with only two carbons. Another structural feature which influences the boiling points and melting points of hydrocarbons is branching. If a hydrocarbon has a lot of branching or side chains coming off the main carbon chain, this tends to weaken the dispersion forces so that hydrocarbons with a lot of branching will have lower boiling points and melting points than other hydrocarbons with the same number of carbons and hydrogens, but without branching. Let's consider another class of organic compounds, the ethers. Ethers, as we discussed previously, are only slightly polar with weak dipole-dipole forces. However, as with the hydrocarbons, as the ethers get larger, the dispersion forces will increase with size. Compared to most organic compounds, ethers will also have low melting points and boiling points, just a little bit higher than the hydrocarbons. As we move on to the amine functional groups, we have to pay a little more attention to the class of the amine. There will be a difference between primary and secondary amines compared to tertiary amines. In general, primary and secondary amines will be reasonably polar and they have hydrogen bonding ability due to the nitrogen-hydrogen bond. This means that there will be hydrogen bonding between neighboring amine molecules and will lead to relatively high boiling points compared to other organic compounds of similar molecular weight. In general, the more nitrogen-hydrogen bonds we have, the more hydrogen bonding there will be and the greater the boiling point and melting point will be. The relative trend among different classes of amines is that for the same molecular weight, a primary amine will have a higher boiling point than a secondary amine, which will have a higher boiling point than a tertiary amine. Since the tertiary amines have no hydrogen bonding, they'll have the lowest boiling points of all the amines. The last class of organic compounds we'll address with boiling points and melting points are the alcohols. You should recall that the alcohols are very polar with hydrogen bonding ability due to the OH hydroxyl group on the carbons. Hydrogen bonding between the oxygen and hydrogen on neighboring alcohol molecules will lead to very high boiling points compared to other molecules with the similar molar masses. Overall, the more hydroxyl groups that are present on a molecule, the more hydrogen bonding interactions there will be and the higher the boiling point will be. You should also recall that oxygen has a larger electronegativity than hydrogen, and so alcohols will generally be more polar than amines. They'll also have higher melting points and boiling points than amines of similar molecular weight. Finally, let's look at the alkyl halide trends for melting points and boiling points. We'll recall that alkyl halides do have some polarity depending on the electronegativity of the halogen atom involved. In general, for halogens, 
the boiling point and melting point will increase as the electron cloud increases or the size of the halogen atom increases. For example, fluoromethane has a boiling point of negative 78.4 degrees Celsius, whereas chloromethane has a boiling point of negative 24.2 Celsius, and iodomethane has a boiling point of positive 42.4 Celsius. When we discuss solubility, we'll primarily talk about solubility in water. However, it's important to remember that polar solutes will dissolve in polar solvents, such as the case of water as a polar solvent, but nonpolar solutes will be able to dissolve in nonpolar solvents. So you'll have to pay attention to what solvent is being asked in the question. To begin with, hydrocarbons we know are nonpolar organic compounds. Therefore, they'll be insoluble in water, which is a polar solvent. Ethers are just slightly polar. Ethers with fewer than five carbons will be soluble or slightly soluble in water. However, if an ether has more than five carbons, it will generally be insoluble due to the much larger nonpolar hydrocarbon chains that are part of the molecule. Alkyl halides, such as alkyl fluorides, will be more soluble due to the potential for hydrogen bonding between the hydrogen in water and the fluorine in the alkyl halides. However, with alkyl halides, even alkyl fluorides, once you have more than three carbons in the molecule, these will generally be insoluble. For primary and secondary amines, it's possible to have hydrogen bonding with water. And so primary and secondary amines are generally soluble up to about six carbons. Tertiary amines, on the other hand, without the nitrogen bonded to a hydrogen, have much lower solubility. Finally, alcohols also have some hydrogen bonding. Smaller alcohols are going to be very soluble, that is, alcohols with three or fewer carbons. Alcohols with four to six carbons per hydroxyl group are slightly soluble, again, due to the hydrogen bonding responsible. However, once you have more than six carbons per hydroxyl group, the alcohols will even then be insoluble due to the large amounts of nonpolar parts of the molecule from all the carbons and hydrogens.